In the last video, we have seen the authentication process and a demonstration for the authentication process using both the JWT as well as the opaque token. In this video, let's try to understand the authorization process. Even in the authorization process, the OAuth2 resource library provides the authorization on JWT as well as the opaque token. In the authentication, the opaque token was sending the request to the key cloak for the authentication. But in the authorization, neither JWT nor opaque token sends the token to the key cloak for the authorization. Instead, they do the authorization within the Spring Boot application itself. So let's remove this part. And here in the JWT and in the opaque token, we have two different ways of authorization method level authorization this one and security filter level authorization we will see the method level authorization in detail in here i will not cover these three authorization ways right now i'll see if i can do it later i want to finish the key cloak part as well for now let's try to understand the method level authorization in detail for jwt what happens here in the method level authorization is the incoming JWT token from the key cloak is converted into a format which fits proper to the Spring Boot's OAuth2 format. You see, this is the part of the token which we receive from the key cloak. Basically, what the JWT authorization process does is it first retrieve the roles from this token and create a JWT's authentication token. Let's see that in a bit detail how it happens. The JWT has configuration object which contains all the predefined default configurations and within this default configurations there is a configuration for an object or a class that converts the incoming JWT token or the access token from the key cloak to the Spring Boot specific format. And that converter is JWT's authentication converter. Let's try to understand this JWT authentication converter in a bit detail. When the access token is received in the Spring Boot application, what it does is it checks if the incoming access token has the property with name scope or SCP and also it checks the property SCP only if the property scope is not available in the access token. In a sense, if you have both the properties with name scope as well as SCP, then the property with name SCP is ignored and instead it processes the property with name scope. From the property picked up in the first step, it reads all the values and appends scope underscore constant string to each of those property values. This works only on the string values whose roles are separated with spaces or the roles are present as a array of string. And once this appending is done, it creates a JWT authentication token class. For this JWT authentication token class, it adds the roles that have been extracted from the access token in the previous steps. And this JWT authentication token is used to authorize the incoming request on specific APIs. Let's try to understand these steps with an example, an example of the key cloaks JWT access token itself. Here we have the key cloak specific JWT access token and you see there is a property with name scope as we have seen previously that it picks the values of this scope property. Now what this JWT authentication converter does is it picks up the values from scope property which are profile and email but this is a string separated by space it splits this string from space and creates an array and these are the roles that the authentication converter the default authentication converter extracts and the next step was to add a prefix of scope 
So for these roles, it adds the prefix of scope and the roles looks something like this. Then using these roles, it creates an object of JWT authentication token, which means the roles do not have the role of manager, which is the role which we get from the keycloaks access token. Here we have the role of manager in the access token, but the default JWT authentication converter of Spring Boot's OAuth2 resource library says that there is nothing like manager role. These are the only roles which are provided by the access token. And I'm going to validate the authorization on these two roles itself. So if you are trying to access any REST API, which has the role of manager, it fails. So since we cannot use this default JWT authentication converter, we need to write our own authentication converter. So let's see that in our next video on how to do that and a demonstration with an example. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.